everyone, it's Lily Douse here at AIBC 2023 and I am joined by Ash from Metaverse Go. This is an exciting project. We love hearing about the Metaverse here at AIBC, so please explain a little bit about Metaverse Go. Thank you very much, Lily, and hi everyone. So um, about Metaverse Go, our idea of when we started it about a year ago was to help both users understand what Web3 gaming and the future of gaming could be like, and as well as help projects or games find consumers. So it solves two problems um, as a platform. It's a, it's a meeting place for games. It's a discovery place for the users or potential users of these games. So our intent was to find um, games, aggregate them on our platform, and be the top funnel for game discovery and send as many users to understand both what Web3 gaming could be like and also understand the options that's out there. Amazing. I think I definitely think the metaverse is such an incredible growing industry. There's so much potential. As you're saying, gaming is at the forefront of pushing that right. towards the user, to towards the general populace out there. So how do you envision the metaverse being taken on board? Obviously, gaming, how long do you think it's going to take? The latter part of the question of how long it would take, that I can't be sure. I, definitely, there are strides. There have been great strides over the past couple of years. But the idea has been around. Uh, the idea of immersive gaming, the idea of finding a space, connecting with people digitally has been there. And definitely what I can be certain of is in the next few decades, uh, the level of digital dependency that people have, the percentage of their lives that are online is gradually increasing. So if I were to compare myself to I have a daughter who's seven. Her life when she's in her teens would definitely be 10 times or 100 times more digital than mine today. And with that concept in mind, I, I think um, it's not how long will it take, but it's the evolution and it'll constantly get there. Games are in the forefront because for most of the things uh, we've seen, gaming tends to adopt technology, experiment a lot faster. But that doesn't mean that other industries are behind. I think with the concept of more of our lives being digital, you're going to start seeing brands look at uh, catering to a digital self. The idea that you know the reason we wear watches, clothes, is to show a persona. And if your persona is digital, if you're back at home in your flip-flops and jammies, you're buying your next Nike shoe as a digital version of it. So I think there's that trend that will follow, but definitely gaming, game assets have already started. Yeah, that's that's very true. I think there's so many ways for people to get involved in gaming and then push more into this digital world, right. which, yeah, a large percentage of the population, the young population, are already living in this slight metaverse. Right. It's just how you see the metaverse as being in incorporated. And what are you personally doing at Metaverse Go to help encourage, you know, more people to adopt the metaverse and understand the metaverse? Is there ways that you think we can try and speed up the process of people adopting to the metaverse? Definitely, there's, there's opportunity to speed up the process. And I think technology always accelerates faster than how we as humans adopt to it. Um, and one of our main goals is really to simplify that onboarding process. Um, if you've ever looked into crypto or looked into uh, blockchain or NFT-based gaming, I think the current process takes multiple steps. You go through multiple platforms before you could even acquire an asset online. And what we're trying to do is simplify that for the older generation who probably uh, have difficulty figuring out what a digital wallet would do. How do they convert their regular cash in hand into something digital to buy that game asset? So what we've done is we've created ways that almost self set up for these users. They just provide a mobile number on our platform and we generate everything for them. And then as they learn, we transfer responsibility, we transfer ownership and give them the optionality to self-manage 
Um, but the education, the discovery, and the hesitation against, oh, I might do something wrong, right? I'll put, and it's like, should I put my money in a bank account? I don't even know how to deposit, mm -hmm. right? So that step, we take that out from them and tell them, hey, here's somebody to help you get started, or here's a system, not somebody, but that's ideally where it's headed. No, I think that's an incredible way of doing things. Making things seamless and easy for people is the best way to get everyone on board. Right. I mean, we need to do take the little steps to actually improving people's understanding right. before we can think we can achieve much more than what we're getting at the moment. So it's really mass adoption. And how about the Asian market? Are you finding that there's a great response in Asia in, in comparison to a few other markets? Is there differences in markets or is it all quite similar to their adoption of the metaverse? I think um, there's definitely a difference in the way it's being adopted, um, the East versus the West, definitely. Um, when you mention metaverse from a market like Europe or the US, the immediate idea is, oh, here's a virtual headset you put on your head and that's how to access the metaverse. That is a version of it. But equitability or fairness has to be part of the whole thought process when we think of how to evolve this new world, right? Um, and if you think of markets, Southeast Asia, the Philippines included, or other emerging markets, access to $300, $400 devices might not be for everyone. So how or what is the version of access that is available to them today? Um, it might be 2D, but there are other components of it that will be consistent, right? The fact that I can own, the fact that I could trade, the fact that there is a community all these things are relatively consistent. Our intent is to keep it relatively fair so that you don't leave one world, go to another one, and also you're still disparate in a way that, you know, you have to be rich in the first world before you get. The whole reason, if you think of why people migrated to the US in the first place, was an opportunity to change where they are. Um, I think it's an escape idea it's, or it's a fresh start idea. So we have to give them that fresh opportunity. Hope that answers the question. It's an interesting way of looking at it, for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's actually fascinating to see it as a, a way to enter into like a new, uh, as you say, a new world, a new reality for people. Do we see that as being sometimes a negative thing though? If people are trying to escape reality by going into a virtual reality, that's just an, a, an idea, but is it a slightly scary concept that we could be doing that or like avoiding real life and moving into a digital world? Or is it exciting? Is it something that has a lot of positives? I think like in anything with technology, there is both a positive angle and utilization for it. Um, and there's also a risk um, of abuse. And where I think generally is going, and our mentality at Metaverse Go is that there's a lot more positive. From an economic standpoint, I think, right, uh, opportunity to work or generate value um, and have a global market at hand uh, through this digital space definitely helps alleviate and even out opportunities across the world, right? Uh, pay gaps get kind of minimized. Uh, other things that it also generates is the opportunity to identify yourself without judgment, but by proof of what you've done. So blockchain technology proves output. And instead of evaluating, say, somebody to do the work for you based on their race, their wealth or where they come from, you're looking at what has this person done? Can this person do the job for me? And that definitely is a positive side. There is negative. Um, and I think on the negative side, what we're currently seeing is two angles of regulation. Um, I think first is the community, right? I think as a society, eventually norms are built. What we feel should be fair or unfair gets communicated. and as a society or community, we agree, then I think because we're at a stage where governments are looking into it, there will be standardization, at least a form of it, um, as soon as they get to fully understand where we're going, right? But there are attempts, and I think that's progress, and those are steps in the right direction. 
For sure, yeah. I think it's it's always that difficulty of how do you allow things to progress, but also have control over them to make sure that there's minimal negatives. But as you say, in everyday life, there's always any business, there's always going to be slight pros and slight cons. So it's balancing that out. And being here at AIBC, what brought you along here and what excites you about being here? There's lots of gaming, so I'm sure that does excite you. Oh, definitely. Um, meeting like-minded people, finding people who are building and working with the resources and the technology and trying to push its boundaries is has been exciting meeting other developers in this space uh, starting up and going into an industry that's not as defined usually you need a community as well to help you say okay you know we're building and this place or this space can be so much better and i think it boosts your it would boost anyone's um, confidence seeing that, okay, there are like-minded people, there are people 10 times, 100 times smarter building in this direction. It is very, very possible that this future that we're imagining today will exist. And the more people go towards it, I think it answers your earlier question, how soon or how fast, it really goes back to who's building and how many people and how fast are we building. So the more we see this, events like this definitely booster that, encourage others to join and it grows the whole ecosystem. I mean, it's great to even think that AIVC could be contributing to accelerating growth in a te technological space. So it's very exciting times. Thank you so much, Ash, for being here from Metaverse Go, coming along here to the Philippines, to Manila and just getting to enjoy all the things we have to offer. So thank you for joining us. It's thank been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure as well. Thank you for your time, Lily.